Okay, so welcome back to this next video on cholesterol biosynthesis. Um, so, we're very near the end now of our discussion of cholesterol biosynthesis. We've only got uh, one more step which we're going to cover in detail, and then we're just going to get to lansosterol, and then just uh, draw an arrow between lansosterol and cholesterol. Hopefully you should appreciate that we are pretty close now to cholesterol. Okay, right. So, the next reaction is going to be catalyzed by the same reaction, uh, sorry, by the same enzyme, which we've called squalene cyclase. And it's also got this other name, lansosterol synthase. And it's named because of this second reaction, which we're now going to see, which is going to result in the production of lansosterol. Okay, so basically, the first thing that you're going to do now in this second reaction is we're going to take uh, this hydrogen atom that is attached to this carbon here. So I'm just temporarily going to break with uh, the skeletal structure and show this hydrogen coming off this carbon here. What you're going to do is you're going to move this hydrogen onto this carbon here. So remember this carbon here it only has three bonds at the moment. It really does only have three bonds. It's not just that it looks like it only has three bonds because of the skeletal formula. It actually doesn't have a fourth bond, which is why it has a positive charge. It's lost one of those electrons. So it doesn't have an, uh, um, an unpaired electron, but it's only got three bonds. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to move this hydrogen here with the two electrons that are in this bond onto that carbon. Okay, now one electron in this bond belongs to the hydrogen, one belongs to the carbon, therefore we are effectively taking the electron from this carbon and putting it onto that carbon, and whilst we're at it, we're moving this hydrogen atom with it. Okay, so that will now neutralize this carbon. It's been given the electron from this carbon, and it's now got a nice fourth bond to that hydrogen atom. So that carbon's now done. That's completely happy. Okay, uh, now... This carbon has a problem though, it's only now got three bonds and it's got a positive charge. So it's now going to nick a hydrogen atom off this carbon down here. So again, it's the same story, we're going to take this hydrogen atom along with both electrons that are in this covalent bond. Now one of them comes with the hydrogen, but the other came from this carbon. So we're going to move this whole thing onto there, okay? And we're then uh, going to have this carbon perfectly happy, but this carbon now won't be happy because it will have a positive charge, okay? Because it's lost the electron that it put into uh, this covalent bond here, okay? And this carbon now will have the positive charge. So what we're now going to do is take this methyl group here and put that onto this carbon. So we're grand all the time moving groups from one carbon to the neighboring one. Okay, so the hydrogen off this carbon goes onto this one, the hydrogen off this one goes onto this one, the methyl now is going to go from here to here. So, um, basically, uh, this covalent bond here had two electrons in, one from this carbon and one from this carbon here. We're now going to move this carbon with both of the electrons in that bond onto this carbon here, which means that effectively we're donating one electron from this carbon onto this carbon, and whilst we're at it, we're moving the methyl group. So that will neutralize that carbon and take it back up to having um, four bonds, basically. Okay, and then the same protocol again, this methyl group is now going to move onto uh, this carbon here, okay, and now Finally, what you're going to have is this carbon will then end up with a positive charge and only three bonds. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the electrons that are between this carbon and this hydrogen, and you're going to use those to make a extra bond between this carbon and this carbon. So effectively, you're nicking the electron off this hydrogen that was in this uh, covalent bond here, and you're giving it to this carbon. And then this carbon will use that electron with the electron that was in this bond from this carbon to form another bond, which will take that up to a double bond. And then the proton will be given off, basically. Okay, right. So, what do you then end up with if you do all of that? Well, let's draw it. Uh, you're going to end up with a molecule called lansosterol. So I might as well try and draw it on this same page here. So... Here is the uh, A ring. Now that's completely unchanged. We've still got this alcohol group off here. We've still got these two methyl groups here. 
I've got a methyl group there between the A ring and the B ring here. So this is the B ring. And then uh, we've got the C ring attached to the B ring here. Okay, like so. And then we've got a double bond here. Okay. Then we've got the five-membered carbon ring here. Okay. And we've still got a methyl group off there. And uh, now we've got a methyl group off here, which is the methyl group that came from here, basically. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've moved this methyl group from there to there, but of course we moved this methyl group from there to there, so that means that that methyl group is still there. Okay. Then what we've got is this group here. Okay. So now this group here is this seven-membered carbon side chain, and then we've got a double bond between that carbon there and that carbon there. Okay, and this molecule that you've got here is called lansosterol. Okay, and this conversion of uh, the pre-sterol uh, cation to lansosterol is again catalyzed by the same enzyme here. So this enzyme catalyzes both of these reactions here. Okay, right. And now, we're not going to discuss how lansosterol then goes to cholesterol because it's got, as I say, uh, about 20 steps in that process. However, you can hopefully appreciate that this has a similar structure to cholesterol. So if I just remind you of the structure of cholesterol then. Okay, so here's the A ring uh, with the alcohol group coming off. Then we've got the B ring here. We've got a double bond down there, a methyl group off there. Then we've got the C ring here, this six-membered carbon ring up here. And then we've got the five-membered carbon ring, which is a D ring over here. Okay, with a methyl group off there. Then we have this seven-membered side chain up here with a methyl group off it. So you can see that lansosterol and cholesterol have a similar structure. So this is cholesterol. Okay, right. Uh, so there is around 20 steps in the process whereby you convert lansosterol into cholesterol, so we won't go in detail there. Okay, so that now concludes our discussion of uh, the biosynthesis of cholesterol from uh, scratch, basically, from acetyl coenzyme A, which is within the cytoplasm. And all of these steps take place within the cytoplasm. Okay, 